host, ladies and gentlemen, for this morning, Johnny Nash! I'm uh, Johnny Nash, and not Johnny Cash. <laughs> now, let me explain that to you. A lot of people have had difficulty with my name, Johnny Nash, Johnny Cash. Well, let me straighten it out now, right? First of all, there are some amazing differences <laughs> between me and Johnny Cash. You know what I mean? First of all, He's much taller than I am, right? <laughs> Second, he plays guitar, and I don't. Straight, Johnny Nash. Just want to clear that up. Tonight, are you ready? Yeah. A few weeks ago, my first guest, Gladys Knight and the Pips, appeared on the Midnight Special hosted by the BGS. And it was a pleasure for me to appear with them on that show. An even greater pleasure to have them here with me tonight. Huh? Let's have a special welcome for Gladys Knight and the Pips. One of our gold records, thanks to you. If I were you a woman And you were my man You'd have no other woman You'd be weak as a lamb If you had 
the strength to walk out that door. My love would overrule my sins, and I'd call you back for more if I were your woman. If I were your woman, and you were my man. Mm, yeah. She tears you down, darling. Says you're nothing at all. Now I'd like to introduce two guys who are also making their second appearance on the Midnight Special. Their comedy is fresh, and I mean really fresh. They knocked me out. Are you ready to give a big, big hand yeah. to Freeman and Murray? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody want to buy a little dope? <laughs> well, this looks like our kind of people, don't they? They may be yours. I don't see any of mine out there. <laughs> no, you got a couple of brothers right over there. Hey, I was beginning to feel like the Lone Ranger. <laughs> well, folks, we're going to make you laugh for about five minutes. Yeah, uh, we're going to be up here for an hour. <laughs> You know, though, uh, we're both regulars on the Sonny and Cher show, and I'd like to mention that aside from Sonny and Cher, Freeman has done a lot of other things in television, too. You want to tell him about some of the other things you've done? Well, actually, folks, I don't want to sound conceited. Okay, well, I'll tell him what I've done. No, I'll I tell him. <laughs> no, I was on uh, Mod Squad, I was on Ironside, and I did two pictures for the FBI. One this way and one this way. <laughs> And also, Freeman will be doing the sequel to The Godfather. It's called The Black Mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm doing my first Western. It's called The Banana Kid. Bang, bang, bang. 
Bang, 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 you're happy. Bang, you're crazy. Bang, you're sterile. Bang, you're stupid. <laughs> bang, you're black. Look, it worked. This guy's going bananas. <laughs> bang, I'm bananas. Bang, 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 bang. Click, 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 click. Click, click. Now what are you gonna do? Oh, just a minute. <laughs> Hold my gun, please. <laughs> Got my gun back, please. Thank you. <laughs> Bang, bang, bang! Bang, 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 bang! Now what are you gonna do, huh? 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 You know, I'm gonna fix you once and for all. <laughs> That's right. I mean, we've been partners for two years, and you've been clowning, right? I'm gonna fix you. Hold on, folks. How can he fix the banana kid? Bang, bang, boom, boom. Bang, 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 bang. You know, you know, folks always associate black people with watermelon. <laughs> I want to clear that once and for all, black people hate watermelons. Really? I do. I do. One, I, I know I hate watermelons. Because there's one thing I hate worse than watermelon. What's that? Watching somebody eat watermelon. <laughs> you know, I dig Diana Ross, but it would be all over if I ever saw that chick sucking on a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Freeman, Freeman, I got a surprise for you. I got a surprise for you. I just, last week, I learned my first soul song. I, just, I like to sing a soul song for the folk. <laughs> the only soul you got is on the bottom of those shoes. Uh, no. no, seriously, because you colored people can sing soul, you know? Wait, uh, we what? Color? No, no, man, you didn't fill off your horse. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're blacks. Wait a minute, you got Red Fox, Slappy White, James Brown, Al Green, Vita Blue. Hold it. We'll call it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we like, to, we like to close by showing you something kind of weird. We always try to close like doing something weird. And we like to show you how language was discovered. You know, how folks first learned to talk. I still haven't learned. Way back in the caveman days. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know. You don't know. Ah! Ooh! Ow! Ah! Ooh! Ow! Ow! How are you, man? Well, I need to see back to go, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We would now like to show you how far we've advanced in two million years. Here's two guys today. <gasps> hey, baby. Hey, what's happening? Hey, too much. Out of sight. Hey, right on. Groovy. I can dig it. Far out. Up tight. You out of sight. <laughs> too much. You got it. Give me five. Ow. <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> Ooh. Ow. Uh. Ooh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> As many of you know, I've spent some time in Jamaica, experimenting with Jamaican rhythms, music, called reggae. Now, my next guest developed an English sound while living in Cleveland, Ohio. And that ain't easy, right? <laughs> Would you join me this morning in welcoming from the shores of Lake Erie one of the most successful recording groups around, the Raspberries.
Composers, singers. My next guest is, is more than just a pretty face. Her live performances and records have been acclaimed by audiences and critics alike. She's just returned from Europe where she did a host of TV shows. Her single, Go Like Elijah, has been a big hit in Holland for many weeks. And Thunder and Lightning has been just that in Germany. Would you join me in welcoming to the Midnight Special Shy Coltrane.
My next guest is one of the finest young composers, singers around today. He wrote Helen Reddy's hit single, Peaceful. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Mr. Kenny Rankin. Sunshine of my life, yeah. That's why I'll always be around. You're the apple of my eye. Forever you stay in my heart. It seems like this is the beginning. Though I've loved you for a million years. I would find myself drowning in my own tears You are the sunshine of my life, yeah That's why I'll always be around You are the apple of my eye Forever you're in my heart You must have known that I Cause you came to my rescue And if I thought I was in heaven How could so much love be inside of you? You are the sunshine of my life That's why I'll be around You are the apple of my eye that the president is watching the midnight special tonight. Okay. And Johnny, he wants you to do your big hit. Let me make myself perfectly clear. <laughs> That's close, close. Uh, Actually, it's called, I can see clearly now. For the president, that's close enough, man. I agree with you. Okay, and we'll do it for him uh, right after this station break. And we're gonna come back with Gladys Knight and the Pips. Oh! The Raspberries.
Storyteller in country music with um, Harper Valley PTA, the year that Clayton Delaney died, uh, just a host of other hits. A successful writer and a successful performer. Please welcome with me Tom T. Hall. <laughs> As I promised you, here they are again, back to do their giant record, Neither One of Us. A big welcome for Gladys Knight and the Pips. It's sad to think we're not gonna make it. It's gotten to the point Well, we just can't fake it Ooh, for some ungodly reason We just won't let it die I guess neither one of us 
wants to be the first to say goodbye. Wondering, wondering what I'm gonna do without you. And I guess you must be wondering that same thing too. My next guest came from Alabama with a banjo on his knee. No, it's not true. He did come from Alabama, though, to seek fame and fortune in Hollywood. And he first got himself a job writing jokes for Johnny Carson, I think it was. And now he's on his own writing for himself and doing fantastic. Let's have a big round of applause for Andrew Johnson. Hello. Yes, I'm Andrew Johnson. I'm from the South. South is sort of it's like its own ethnic group, really. Um, and I was into that very heavily in my younger days. I went to the University of Alabama. I was in the Redneck Studies program. I wanted to learn about my cultural heritage. You know, I took courses like the history of grits, advanced ignorance, bigotry 101. Tough courses, you know. I really shouldn't say it because, like, people from the South are not any dumber than people other sections of the country. Other sections of the country have their share of bigots. We have more than our share of bigots. 
I've often wondered about that. Why did all the bigots move south? <laughs> it had to be simple, like one day God was sitting on a rain cloud, clipboard in one hand, a gold bick in the other. <laughs> well, let's see. The bigot quota. Boy, this is a crummy job. How do I get all the crummy jobs around here? Let's see. Northeast, 200,000. Midwest, 300,000. Deep South, 20 million <laughs> But Lord, they only got 18 million people. Oh, uh, that's okay. Um, send the other two million to Orange County. <laughs> Saw my father when I was home. It's always good to talk to my father. My father always has a little piece of advice for me every time I go home. He's very disappointed when I wanted to become a comedian. He had other plans. And um, so he gives me the same talk every time I go home. Very authoritative guy, my father. Welcome home, son, welcome home. Sit down, relax, relax, damn it, relax. <laughs> Want a drink? No, uh, well, I'm sorry I don't have any heroin. <laughs> Guess I'm just not hip. <laughs> Went into show business, huh, son? Your hair's too long. You wear funny clothes. Son, there's something I've wanted to ask you. I, I'll put this as tactful as I can. Are you a fairy? <laughs> Thank God for that. I don't know, why'd you become a comic, son? You know, Paul Evans, Ted Evans' boy? He's a hell of a kid. He made 50 grand last year working for the Dristan Company. He's a nasograph operator. <laughs> Big money in nasal hygiene, son. Young kid like yourself, sky's the limit. You had it too easy, that's what. Not me. I went through puberty during the Depression. <laughs> Worked my way through puberty in a gas station. Wasn't easy. We didn't have any money. You know what I got for Christmas one year? A stringless yo-yo. <laughs> a stringless yo-yo. I tried to walk the dog and broke my ankle. Grandfather had to fix it. Your grandfather was a doctor. Some folks thought he was a quack. He, he used to drive through cemeteries in a pickup truck and perform freelance autopsies. I, one time he did an autopsy on a man who was just taking a nap. So he, he was dumb, he was dumb, but he was honest. He put on his report, cause of death, autopsy. Your grandfather got me my first job. I was a claims adjuster for a life insurance company. It's my job to go out and be sure the policyholder died. <laughs> Toughest cases were boring people. It's hard to tell when boring people are dead. <laughs> I'll never forget the case of Cecil Cringe, a retired animal barber. I received a phone call from the widow Cringe. Mr. Johnson, can you come out and check the mister? He's either dead or very depressed. <laughs> Been like that for three weeks. I'd like to get him in the ground before hot weather sets in. <laughs> People didn't know, son. I used to have to send out pamphlets to all our policyholders entitled The Four Symptoms of Death. <laughs> One, you wear the same suit three or more days in a row. Two, you have trouble cashing checks. Three, your life stops flashing in front of your very eyes. Four, you regret coveting your neighbor's wife. <laughs> My father can go in like that for hours. So could I, but um, the little man back there is going, cool it. So uh, I better end here. All I can say is thank you and good night. <laughs> Gonna be a bright, 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 bright sunshine.
Shine its ever-loving light on you. Let the midnight shine its ever-loving Earlier, Kenny Rankin performed for you, You Are the Sunshine of My Life, which was written by Stevie Wonder. And now, doing one of his own compositions called In the Name of Love, once again, Kenny Rankin. <laughs> a smile that only lasts a little while it makes me cry without shame and uh, how can you please me to torture and tease me and do it in the name of love don't you know how to be nice you leave me without thinking twice and you won't like an oven only when you want my loving then you go from fire to eyes but uh, how Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the fantastic Shy Coltrane. You know, you know, one thing that interests me, just listening to you and, and your music and your approach to it, you seem to be very, uh, shall I say, serious or intense, or what would you call it? Uh, honest, I guess. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It comes over. Do you have another tune, that, uh, another piece of honesty you'd like to lay on us? Yes, I'd like to sing a song that relates to an experience that I had with someone that I felt was a friend. Beautiful. Shy Coltrane. Stand and lie to me and look me 
Wish I knew what strange disease could make you act that way. All the things we did together, I've known you for so long. Oh, I always did believe in you. How could I be so wrong? You were my sake of all we had I should try to understand but it just doesn't make much sense to me to trust in you again I wish we could forget it all but I don't think that we can Now for some more of that down-home country sound. Old dogs, children, and watermelon wine with Tom T. Hall. You ready? How old do you think I am, he said. I said, well, I didn't know. He said, I turned 65 about oh, 11 months ago. And I was sitting in Miami pouring blended whiskey down when this old gray black gentleman was cleaning up the lounge. There wasn't anyone around except this old man and me. And the guy who ran the bar was watching Ironside on TV. So uninvited, he sat down and he opened up his mind on old dogs and children. And watermelon wine Ever had a drink of watermelon wine He asked And he told me all about it Though I didn't answer back Said ain't but three things In the world that's worth the song Solitary time, but old dogs and children and watermelon wine. He said, You know, women think about themselves when men folk ain't around, and 
friends are hard to find if they discover that you're down he said i tried it all when i was young and in my natural prime now it's old dogs and children and watermelon wine He said, old dogs think about you Even when you make mistakes And God bless little children While they're still too young to hate And when he moved away I found my pen And I copied down that line About old dogs and children Watermelon wine Well, I had to catch a plane up to Atlanta that next day As I left for my room, I saw him picking up my change And that night, I dreamed in peaceful sleep of change summertime of old dogs and children and watermelon wine the title of my latest single my merry-go-round also the title of my latest album
like to thank all my wonderful guests. I really had a wonderful time. And don't forget that next week, your hosts will be Burns and Schreiber. Until then, good morning to you. <laughs>